Hello, welcome back to Glazing with Amico. So, this is part two. I uh, got my sample plate. I have the the uh, C25 downpour is nice and dry on here, and now I've got the C19 glacier, which is as you can see, it's a pale blue. So I'm going to apply the glacier now, and I'm just going to go right over the top of the whole thing. No need to kind of glaze around. Now I know that there are many people who find it difficult to get an even coat with the celadons. I feel like the, the main thing about getting a nice even coat with any of the any of the celadons on a flat surface <clears throat> sorry is to load your brush and to do long even brush strokes kind of go over where you've gone, where you've glazed. <laughs> A couple of weeks ago somebody asked how I can do this without having glaze on my hands. Well, there we go. Glaze on my hands. <clears throat> So that is, that is one coat. So when you're thinking in terms of like applying a coat until it dries, that is one coat. I do not consider it a second coat until that one has dried completely. And then I'll come back and do a second coat. So to review, if you're just joining me for part two, in this plate, clean off the glaze that I splattered. In this plate, I used the V370 Velour Black Velvet Underglaze to draw the dragonfly and the leaf. And then um, once that was dry, I used a small brush to apply Downpour C25, just one coat on the design and then I applied two coats of Glacier C19 over the whole the whole thing. You can also do this as I said before you can also do this with underglazed decals so if there's uh, a commercial decal or if you've made your own underglazed decals you can apply those and when they're dry you can apply the celadons over it can also use different color combinations. Um, one of my favorites is using uh, ochre and then mixing clear over it. As long as you're using two celadons, you know that they'll they aren't going to interact in strange ways. And uh, as long as you're using a very light glaze for the top coat, like mixing clear or glacier or ice, you can use a, a slightly darker tone for the undercoat and you'll get a, a, a nice contrast. So, uh, and because they all have the same base, this is food safe. You know that it's not going to um, do any strange things. You're not gonna have bubbling or blistering um, from the interactions. And uh, you know that the base is, uh, has been tested. So go ahead and use that for plates, for cups, for anything you like. Uh, there's there's so many different colors that you can use. I just recommend using one of the medium translucent tones for the darker color um, instead of using something really dark like obsidian or cobalt. Instead use like smoke or uh, downpour because uh, they'll, they'll show the underglaze that you, you'll still see the lines. 
So you can see where it's drying faster on the raw clay rather than on top of the downpour. So I need to wait for it to dry on all of that before I can put the next coat on. But I'm going to do that off camera. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments and I will answer them offline. And uh, enjoy your glazing. There are so many different ways that you can use this technique. Uh, I just love being able to bring a lot of color and design into pieces. It also works great with the celadons. It works great for vertical surfaces as well. It doesn't have to be on a plate. So, happy glazing!